ago. Um, I was in college starting actually a whole administration. Uh, really quickly I realized that it's not what I want to do at all, and I want to be in digital. Uh, so I started the company and we did SEO. That's all we did, search engine optimization. Um, and I knew I wasn't uh, a great salesperson, I'm not a great public speaker, uh, but what we did is we focused on strategy. Um, and we were able to be very successful. Uh, so one of the first accounts I landed was actually Lexus. Uh, not a car dealership, but uh, their corporate brand. Uh, seven years later, kind of fast forward, uh, we now have over 50 employees. We're one of the fastest growing uh, companies in America. Uh, so what I'm going to share with you today is hopefully some strategy that you can take home, take to your car dealerships and implement. Um, we keep them basic. Um, it's something that I think you guys can actually implement within 30 days. Okay, so the agenda today is uh, first, before I actually reveal the tactics, um, I'm going to teach you guys some keyword research uh, because the keywords are really the foundation of SEO. Um, if you do a lot of things right and you target the wrong keywords, uh, you just shot in the wrong direction, really. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that you guys are all keyword masters. We're all going to get on the same level. Um, and then actually the tactics will become much easier uh, once you know the keywords. Okay, so the first thing you have to know is uh, this uh, graph right here. It's called the long-tailed search demand graph. And I apologize one second, we're going to try another quick. how people search, especially nowadays, this is trending more and more. People are, are search for what's called in the industry long-tailed keywords. Uh, those are keywords that have four words, five words, six words. Uh, no longer do people search for what the other 30% is, is the short tail, it's the cars, you know, sedans. Um, even if you try to recall your own experience, say 10 years ago, you maybe would go to Google and search for one word, maybe search for two words. Now more and more you're searching for exactly what you want and you expect to find it. I want to buy a 2018 Mazda 3 Series in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I'm searching for the whole thing. I'm not just searching for auto dealership and hoping that this dealership actually sells what, uh, what I'm looking for. I'm searching for uh, the full thing. Uh, so here's some examples. Again, Mazda dealership is the, the short tail. It's what 20%, 30% of the population search for. It's also the most competitive. Uh, what you want to go for is what's here in the blue is the long tail keywords. It's what 70% of the people are searching for, and it's also the 70% that's not competitive. Uh, so it's very easy for you to rank high in Google with those. So again, Mazda dealership becomes Mazda dealership near Glen Rock, New Jersey. That's where I'm from. That's what I would search. Mazda 3 could become a 2018 Mazda 3 for sale. I'm searching for the long thing. Just a couple more examples. Um, I'm not necessarily searching for an auto body shop. Um, I'm searching for exactly what my problem is. I'm saying, hey, it looks like I have a problem with my engine. The problem is in my Mazda 3. Uh, that's what I want to fix. Um, and the last one here is used cars. Say you, you sell used cars. No one goes to Google and just types in used cars anymore. They type in, I want to buy used cars in Burton County, New Jersey. You have your geo in there. You have the action there. Um, we give you some examples of how to actually form these long tail keywords so you can do for yourselves for your own business. Okay, so how do I form a long tail keyword? Really, there's three parts to it. The first part is the action. What are you actually doing? Are you buying? Are you selling? Are you leasing? Are you repairing? The second one is the topic. What are you repairing? What are you selling? What are you buying? You're repairing uh, Buicks. You're repairing Mazda 3s. Um, and a lot of people search for the year make model. 2018 Mazda 3. Or just Mazda 3 or just Mazda. The more specific you get, the better it is. And the last one here is the geo. If you work at a car dealership, it's a, a local-oriented uh, market. Uh, this is separate from saying having an e-commerce site where it really doesn't matter where you are. With a car dealership, with an auto body shop, that geo is really important. Um, if you rank um, on the first page for used cars nationwide, really out of 100 people clicking that ad of yours, probably only one or two will actually be in your geo area to buy the cars. Um, and it's funny, a lot of people actually call up um, being an agency and saying, hey, Mike, really, I want to be on the first page for new cars. I don't care about anything else, you know, don't give me the bells and whistles, I want to be on the first page for new cars. And quite frankly, if you call a, a digital marketing agency, an SEO agency, with that prompt, uh, they'll ask you what's your budget. Um, and given you have enough, good enough budget, they'll take your business and they could probably actually do the job. Um, 
However, if you're on the first page for used cars and you're selling in just a small district in the United States, you don't want to be there. That doesn't make sense for you. Uh, so again, the, the geo is really important if you're actually servicing a geo area. Make sure you have that in the target keyword. So what do you now do with these target keywords? So you have these four or five words that you want to rank for. How do you actually get your website on Google for those four or five words? The first thing and the most important is the title tag. The title tag actually as a user, they don't really see the title tag. The title tag is all the way on top in your browser tab. You probably actually only see two words for it and then there's like a dot, dot, dot. The user doesn't see the full thing. It's not even on the web page. So for the user, it's not important. But for Google, is that the most important thing actually is your title tag. And usually Google uses it right in their search results right here. So you take your keyword and you form it into a title. Um, and really the game is, is that with the title you have around 60 characters. Anything more, uh, Google will just cut off, they'll put a few dots and they'll kind of hurt you for it. Say, hey, you really don't know how to use your title. Right? Anything less and it's a uh, missed opportunity. So if all of a sudden you have 60 characters but you're only using 20 or 30, those 30 characters are left over, you could target something else there. Uh, so again, what I did here is I used my card keyword and I made it into uh, a sentence, something that could actually make sense if you read it. So it's five 2018 Mazda 3 cars in Berkeley County, New Jersey, <coughs> best prices at ABC Auto. If a user sees this, they'll actually click it. Um, it actually reads well. It's not just keyword, comma, keyword, comma. And you look at this and say, you know, I will never click this. I have no idea what it is. Uh, so this would be a good title of that. Um, this tool, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through a few others. Um, if you guys want the presentation afterwards, my email is in the book. You could just ask for it, so you don't necessarily have to write all these down. But it's a really good tool, it's a free tool. The tools I'll show you are free as well. It's called the Moz Title Tag. Really easy to use. You type in what you want your title to be, and it pops out uh, what it looks like. So if it's shorter, if it's longer, you're literally playing with um, a few pixels sometimes uh, to really get that optimal length. Okay, so now that you have your keyword, and you put in the title, you gotta make sure that the page talks about it as well. Uh, so if it's, you know, if Mazda 3 is in your title tag and nowhere else on the page, and on the page you're talking about something else, you're talking about football, Google looks at this and says, hey, wait a second, this page is not about Mazda 3. So it's in your title, it's also in your content. Um, and here's kind of the way it works, is that you, you take your target keywords and you also expand them. So if you're targeting the word dealer, also consider dealership. If you're targeting the word car, how about auto, how about sedan, how about hatchback? If it's the word for sale, how about the word buy? And kind of doing those synonyms, uh, Google looks at it and says, hey, you know, this guy really, you know, the page is really what the topic is supposed to be. Um, and, and this is what a paragraph looks like. So it's a few sentences that really anyone could write. It's nothing special. You can't really go wrong with it if you can understand the basics. Uh, so something in your own uh, car dealerships, uh, perhaps an intern could even do, uh, someone in the marketing team could actually do this as well. Okay, so some essential tools. Uh, the bottom one, the Moss title tag tool, is the one I've already showed you guys. I have a couple more tools here. Uh, Keyword Toolio, know, these are all free. And in fact, I took a screenshot of the free version. You don't have to pay for this. If you pay, you get a little bit more data. Uh, but all these tools are completely free. Uh, so here, uh, with this tool, really helps you with keyword discovery. If you kind of go here and you say, hey, listen, Mike, you know, I know that we have Mazdas um, uh, in the storefront. I know that's what we sell. But what do people actually search for? How do I get to take it from here's what I'm selling to here's what the target keyword is? You plug into this tool. Again, it's keywordtool.io. And, and all I did here was put in 2018 Mazda. And here's what people are searching for. Uh, they're searching for the actual models. They're searching for the lineup. Uh, so you look at this and say, hey, actually, what if I have a page on my website about the whole Mazda lineup? Because people search for it. If you make a page, you'll be on Google for it. Here's just one more example. Here I put in Mazda Repair. So what do people actually search for? Mazda Repair Shop. What are the cost? A Mazda Repair Shop by me. Again, you look at this and say, hey, these are the keywords that I want my website to target. You optimize accordingly, and all of a sudden you're getting value from a sale. Okay, so Keyword Planner, this is actually um, a tool from Google. Um, it's a little bit harder to get to though, you have to have a Google AdWords account. So if you guys are doing Google AdWords pay per click, you already have it. Um, if you are not, um, it's free to open. So you could go ahead and you could just open an account. It's absolutely free to open, you don't actually have to spend money on it. And you could then use this tool, it's called the uh, Google Keyword Planner. What this gives, it gives you search volume. 
So you say, hey Mike, these keywords are good, but who the heck is searching for it? Um, and a lot of times actually we give calls and we say, hey Mike, I'm actually top three for uh, premier Mazda dealership in New Jersey. And, and I go in, I'm like, well, you know, funny you say that, do you know how many people search for it? And they say, I don't know, probably a bunch, right? And you go into this tool and, and you find that it's zero. Um, and, and a lot of SEO agencies, they, that's actually kind of how they fool you. They say, hey, here's the keywords, or they ask you, what keywords do you think you want to get on the first page? They look at them, maybe they say, yes, I think I can do it. But they go to this tool and they say, hey, it's not competitive because no one searches for it. So if you think it's a good keyword, you put this tool, you see how many people are actually searching for it on a monthly basis. If you are doing Google AdWords pay per click, uh, not a SEO, you also see what you would be paying for per click here. Um, and then you can do your math and say, hey, you know, it's worth it. These are the type of people I want in my shop. So again, this is a Google Keyword Planner tool. Um, and I put in uh, Mazda here and spit out uh, all the terms for Mazda, how much it costs. But really, this tool isn't great for keyword discovery. So you use Keyword Toolio to find the keywords. And then you use this tool to actually plan how many people are searching for it. If I do it, a Google AdWords campaign, uh, how much would I have to pay for that keyword? Okay. So now that we are all content masters, now that we're all rather keyword masters and we know what <coughs> keywords uh, we want to target, um, I'm actually going to go through the six topics, the six tactics uh, that you guys could use and come home with. Okay, so the first four um, are right here in front of you. So this is four content ideas. Uh, remember, the, if you have a page on your website and it targets a keyword, you will rank for it on Google. That's the idea. Uh, what's good about SEO also, different from a lot of other forms of marketing, is that it has permanency. So if I today write 100 pages, if I add 100 pages to your website, uh, it's still going to be there next year, it's still going to be there in two years, it's still going to be in 10 years. Uh, so really it's, it's not about will SEO give you an ROI, it's just about when. Because you write these pages, they're going to be ranking. You're not paying to have these pages up, maybe you're paying someone to write them. Uh, well, depending on what CMS you have, but in most cases you do not pay per page at all, it's an asset that you hold with the company. So here's four content ideas. Uh, the first one is about your year make models. Really in the auto deal, uh, in the street, that's what everyone searches for. So for now you have a, a website that doesn't have a page for every single uh, car, every single make model that you guys sell, uh, you should add it. Uh, the new ones and also the used inventory. Um, so if you're able to do that, say, hey, we have our 2014, you know, Acura DX, we're not an Acura dealership, but we have it in the lot. Make sure it's on the website because people are searching for it. If you have it on the website, uh, people will find it. Uh, also, what I found a lot, a lot of times happening is that as soon as a car is sold, it's off the website. I actually wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest quite the opposite. Even if you sell a car, find a way to keep it on your website. Because if it's on your website, then it's on Google. If it's on Google, you're getting free traffic to your website. So if someone could actually type in, you know, 2014 Acura DX, and you could say currently sold out, you know, give us a call to find some comparable models. Again, it could cost you nothing. This isn't a pay-per-click campaign where it costs you money to have that uh, car up to get those clicks. They're absolutely free. So even if a car is sold, find a way to keep it on your website. Um, if you do that practice in a few years, all of a sudden you have 500 more pages on your website. There's 500 more opportunities for someone to actually find your business. Uh, the next one is uh, car comparison. So uh, we work with a few car dealerships. And uh, first, we did that first strategy. We said, hey. Every single car you sell, every single car you've ever sold, I want to make sure it's on your website. I want to make sure the title is correct, the content is correct. And we did that, and they say, hey, Mike, that what? We want more. And what's more, you know, we already have a page for every single one of your, our, our, uh, our cars. And the more is what we thought of as car comparison. And we say, hey, listen, you know, if you're looking at a Mazda 3, you might also be looking for a Honda Accord. Um, so how do we target Honda Accord, even though we don't sell it and we don't want to sell it? So we wrote a page on the website and it said something like Honda Accord versus Mazda 3 Auto Dealership Cherry Hill. All of a sudden someone goes to Google and they actually type in Cherry Hill Honda Accord. Keep in mind I've never sold a Honda Accord. They find this website. Maybe they convinced, get convinced by the article that says, hey, here's why the Mazda 3 is better. They get the call. You get the business. They've never even wanted your product. They're searching for something else. Again, not something I would necessarily suggest via pay-per-click. With SEO, you write this once, this lives on your website forever, and you keep getting benefits from it. Car comparison pages. Uh, and you could also do it with years as well. If someone still searches for 2014 Acura MDX, you have a page on it comparing it to one of your own models. You've never had to have the car in your lot. People are still searching for it. They'll find your business. You can convert them. 
Uh, the next one is services. So if you have an auto body shop, um, if you do repair services in your car dealerships, uh, this is very important. Uh, a lot of people actually search for this. Um, and you can imagine more people search for repairing their car than buying a car. Um, and a lot of people, if they go to repair the car in your body, body shop, all of a sudden you have them through their doors, you have their email, you have them in the system. When they want to buy a car, they might call you back. Um, and the trick here is, and it's the same story, is you want to go for the long tail keywords. So you don't want to just have a page on your site that says, auto body shop, we do everything, all year make some models, good price, you just give us a call. <laughs> might be a good page otherwise, but on Google, you won't be there, you're not going to benefit from it. Uh, so it's better to actually break it down. Uh, repair engine, uh, transmission replacement. And go to your auto body guys, ask them, hey, what are the services can we per perform? What are, your, what are your most lucrative ones? What does it make sense to write a page about? Uh, to even expand it further, you say, hey Mike, you know, I've done it. I have 20 pages, what's next? Again, you could actually break it down based on the year make model or even just the make. So all of a sudden, someone's searching for engine replacement Mazda, engine replacement Honda, engine replacement Toyota. And on those pages, you list every single one of your, your makes. Uh, even if you don't sell them a lot, if your guys can repair it, they usually can. You write a page on it, a lot of people search for it. Again, you're not paying per click, you're adding it once, you're benefiting from it for a lifetime. Uh, the next one here is direction pages. So this is the same thing, and a lot of these strategies were actually driven by our own clients. Uh, basically saying, hey, Mike, Mike, what's next? Every month we want to get more traffic. How do we do that? What was next? Uh, and this was a, a really lucrative strategy one of my partners came up with. And they said, hey, Mike, we have this website, and we have thousands of pages, and it's all optimized for where we live, say Cherry Hill. So if someone searches for any engine replacement, if someone searches for any year make model, and the words Cherry Hill, we are on the first page, we're top three. We're absolutely everywhere, but our customers aren't just in Cherry Hill, our customers are everywhere else. They drive up to say 30, 40 minutes to find us. How do we target those as well? And the concept was pretty simple. We said, we'll write a page that says, auto dealership near um, Philadelphia. And we say, hey, do you live in Philadelphia? Come to Cherry Hill, it's only 30 minutes away, to find the best prices for your vehicles. You know, here's a little Google map, here's how to get there, go on this highway, get off this exit. And that's all it was. And we wrote this, um, and all of a sudden now we're ranking for auto dealership in Philadelphia. We're getting some of that business. So what we did, what we did was we went online and we said, hey, what are the towns by Cherry Hill? Um, and usually if you take New Jersey, you're going to find, say, 40 towns, 50 towns, 60 towns within a 20-minute driving distance. You could rank for all of those. So again, you look at it and say, okay, I'm going to write a page for every single location, for every single city. And there, I'm going to be smart about the keywords I use. I'm going to say, hey, auto dealership near Philadelphia. We sell Mazdas. We sell Hondas. We're also an auto body shop. And anything people might search for, you add it. You use the keyword planner to see if there's actually volume into the keywords that you think people are searching for. it. Um, and you write these pages. You write them once. They're out there forever, especially with these direction pages. Uh, there's no uh, uh, next year they don't expire. You know, if you write about a 2018 Mazda 3, Maybe in five years, less and less people are searching for it. If you write about how to get from Philadelphia to Cherry Hill in 20 years, nothing really changed. That page still exists. That page will benefit you for years and years to come. Okay, so you could have um, a website with thousands of pages, uh, with thousands of uh, other websites uh, referencing the website, and you could not, uh, you could be not a Google. And you could come to me, hey Mike, I wrote all these pages, I did all this effort, we're nowhere. Um, and in fact, we, we love seeing these problems because a lot of people come to us and they have a website and it has so many assets already. And it's such a great website and they're not on Google. And we run that tool, we run for audit, and usually it's one little mistake could absolutely make your website disappear on Google. Uh, so something you, you use is a, a site audit tool. This is a free one. It's not the best one. It's not the most advanced one. Um, in fact, my CEO guys yell at me whenever I use this because they, they go, hey Mike, this is too basic. Uh, but really, it solves 95% of the problems, it's the easiest to use. Uh, it's absolutely free software, you can Google it, you can download it. And uh, all you do is you put in your website on top and you press start. And then you watch it find the errors. So here I put in uh, a Mazda dealership by me. And uh, right in the top right, it's a little fuzzy here, but it shows you that as far as Google is concerned, this website has 2,000 duplicate pages. It's not true, they don't. But there's a piece of their code that makes Google think it is. And this website is getting killed on Google. 
they have an awesome website, so many pages, they did a few things wrong in the technical side of things. It could literally sometimes be just a few lines of code that a developer needs to fix to fix all these errors. So put your website through this tool, press go, you can see all the errors. It says what's an error, it says what's just a note, which is the warning. The errors are the most important ones, they're the ones you have to fix ASAP. Uh, you can pretty much take this to a developer, to your web guy, to your IT guy, whoever you guys use in-house uh, that handles your website, uh, maybe to the company that handles the CMS, and say, hey, you know, Mike told me to run this tool, there's a lot of errors, you know, can you fix them? Um, what's really great about this tool is as soon as they fix it or they think they fix it, you open it back up, you press run, it takes 10 minutes to run, you can see if it's fixed or not. Uh, so a lot of audits are manual, they're hard to perform, so it's hard to, hey, I fixed it, hey, did we fix it? Takes a few hours, no, the issues are still there. Uh, this one, although basic, it's very easy to just repeat, it's easy to troubleshoot. Uh, you can see if the issues have actually been fixed. Um, and so can the developer, so it's a nice kind of back and forth that they get. You said don't worry that much about warnings, just worry about the errors? Yeah, so right here, it may be so fuzzy, fuzzy, but it says error, it says warning, and it says note. The most important are the errors. They're, they're the things that, hey, Google thinks that you're missing 800 title tags, or Google thinks that these pages are duplicate. Uh, duplicate pages will kill your website. Um, the, the actual logic behind this about duplicate pages is um, before when Google just came out, a lot of people were just copying each other. So I'd say, hey, you know, why would I have to write all these direction pages? My competitor already did. So I'm going to go to his website, I'm going to copy and paste everything. But my website's better, I'm going to rank higher in Google. That actually used to work until Google said, hey, wait a second, you know, you just copied something. So all of a sudden they create these algorithms that said, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure that whoever was first to write it, they're the ones to get credit. Anyone who copies these guys, uh, not only will they not get credit, but oftentimes they'll penalize you for it. Duplicate content kind of works the same way. Google called your site and they said, hey, it looks like these 1,000 pages are exactly the same. You're trying to trick us. They should have ranked for 1,000 times as the same page. Even though something innocent in the code, Google sees it as a bad thing. So yes, uh, errors are the most important. They're the ones you actually have to fix. Uh, the warnings and the notes, uh, they're more suggestions, but um, if you're going for a full optimization, really you should run these reports um, and not see any issues. Okay, maximize your positive reviews. So, funny story, I was actually going to uh, a restaurant a couple weekends ago, um, and there was a family uh, you know, next to me, and they're going to the same row of restaurants. Um, and there was a, a old boy, not too much older than my daughter, he must have been five, maybe six maximum. And they're going to a restaurant with the family, and the kid has his cell phone out, and he goes to his mom and goes, Mom, I don't want to go to this restaurant, it's very poorly rated. And, and I couldn't believe it, that the six-year-old is actually you know, on his phone looking at the ratings of this restaurant before he walks in. More and more people are tending to this. You know, they're looking online for reviews, uh, they're looking online for ratings, uh, even more than word of mouth. Before they come into your store, they Google your extra brand name, they see your, your reviews online. Uh, not only does it help your branding, not only does it help uh, build to trust, actually sell the cars, not actually get someone on your website, uh, but it actually now helps uh, your Google rankings. Google looks at this now. They said, hey, what's important you know, for users? Who, what website should I show up higher? How about the website that's very highly rated, or rather the business that's highly rated? It added it to its algorithms. Uh, ratings now help your position in search, um, and more people click it. So the more reviews you get, the more clicks you actually get. Uh, so, if you search smart size reviews, and that's something we did internally, we said, hey, reviews are so important, and we actually search for, when someone searches for our brand name, smart sites, what else do they search for? Sometimes they search for a team member, smart sites, Michael Mellon, smart sites, Alex Mellon, but the number one thing is reviews, and that's the same thing across most brands. People search for your brand name, people search for your brand name and the word reviews. Uh, so the first thing you should do is, again, if you have a website, and you don't currently have a page on your website about reviews, add it. Because that's something you control. If someone actually goes to Google and types in your brand name and the word reviews, they do. So many people do. Uh, you don't want someone else there. You don't want that one uh, pissed consumer you know, there. You don't want that one ripped off report there. You want to actually control your real estate. Uh, so the first thing you do is if you have a website, make sure you have a page about, re about reviews on your website. List a couple of testimonials. Again, look at your title tag, call it your brand name, your reviews. That's what you actually want to optimize for. Uh, so right now, if you actually go to SmartSites Reviews and something we're actually very proud of, everything on the first page you see is five stars. 
That's not to say we haven't received a, a, a bad client, a client that hasn't been happy with us. We've actually received uh, several. Uh, so what do we do to make sure that those guys are the ones taking up that first page and only the positive ones do? Um, if you also see here, it's a mix. So the first result there is our website. It makes sense. If you have a site on your a page on your website, Google looks at and says, hey, yeah, really this should be the, fir the first result if someone searches for reviews on your company. Uh, and then there's other outlets. There's Facebook, there's Yelp, there's other places where people could leave a review. And a lot of these things are also being aggregated. So in fact, if I leave a review on Facebook, a lot of these other websites are going to reference Facebook. And all of a sudden, this one review that was left on Facebook or this one review that was uh, left on Yelp is now on a, a dozen different websites. So all of a sudden, our clients come to us and they go, oh yeah, you know, I saw your reviews on Yelp pages. And I know no one's actually left a review on YelpPages.com. Yelp pages actually took took the review from Yelp, uh, from Yelp, from Facebook, and they aggregated it. Um, and then also what you see here is, uh, is Indeed, so it's a little bit on, on the bottom. So again, we met internally and we said, hey, how do we more so maximize our first page or reviews? And actually Indeed ranks really high. So we asked our employees, we said, hey, employees, we sent out a survey, hey, you know, if, if you're not, you know, if there's anything we could improve as management, please come talk to us. If you really like working here, you'd like your friends to work here, you recommend this place to others, we'd really appreciate if you could leave a review on Indeed. Uh, we asked it, a few people did. All of a sudden we have an extra five star rating there on the first page. If we didn't have that there, someone else might have taken that spot that might not have uh, a good review. So in a little kind of funny process flow diagram, this is kind of what we do. Uh, we have an initiative uh, that our director of project management calls up the client after your project. Hey. Congratulations on your new website. You know, what did you think of Ashley? Did you have a good experience? If they did, and they say, hey, amazing, I'm so happy with my website, it's great. We say, hey, really awesome, we really appreciate your business, and uh, could we ask you for a favor? Could you leave us a review on Yelp? Could you leave us a review on Facebook? We really appreciate it, we ask on the phone, we send it in a follow-up email. <coughs> when I actually bought my car, uh, and I bought a Mazda, if you guys haven't guessed yet, uh, actually it wasn't a great experience, it was a very poor one. And uh, the salesperson even knew that, and uh, you know, it wasn't that great. However, I was actually asked, I was handed the paper, hey, could you please leave us a review? And I look at this and I go, I really shouldn't have asked me, because you know, this gives me ammo to actually write a bad review because I wasn't too happy with it. So what do we do with the ones that weren't too happy? Again, we pick up the call and they say, hey, congratulations on your website, you know, what did you think? And they go, well, you know, I wasn't sure, it took a little longer than expected, I didn't really love uh, the, the graphics, I didn't really love the content, really, I didn't have the best experience. All of a sudden, we take this outside and we say, hey, how can we be better? We never asked this person to leave us a review uh, because they wouldn't leave a good one. So again, ask for reviews for the positive guys, for the guys that are your biggest fans. Try to minimize the guys that otherwise would have left you a bad review. And, and don't make it that uh, for them to vent is to go ahead and actually give you a better review. Actually talk to them, say, hey, what's your issue? I'd love to hear more. Take the survey, they'll go all the way up to management so we could handle the issues and make our service better. Let that be the place that they vent. Don't let their venting be in a public profile that will, I mean, these profiles last forever. The reviews don't go away. You have a one-star review on Facebook, it's not gonna go away next year. It's not gonna go away in five years. It's kind of like the benefits of SEO is that, and just online digital is the, the longevity, is the permanence, is the presence, uh, but also the negatives. You know, if someone actually writes a bad review about you, it's going to be up there forever. Uh, so again, the guys that are bad, solve it with a phone call, solve it with an internal survey. Uh, the guys that are happy, ask them to leave your review. Uh, and usually what we do is you say, hey, you know, if you can read two reviews, that would be great. Here's a list of kind of general sites like Yelp, like Facebook, like Google. Uh, these are actually the ones I do recommend, uh, Google, Facebook, and Yelp, uh, because all these other sites take you from these three sources. So in fact, if they leave your review in one place, it, it could be used on your website, and all these other places uh, take it. If you ask them to leave your review just via email, hey, please say some kind words for us to add our website. It's only on your website. It's not even as trustworthy. People would trust it more if it's on Yelp. People would trust it more if it's on Google. Um, so ask about it to leave a review on a general site. Also ask the same thing for a car specific site. Uh, there's Edmunds, there's Car Dealer. Uh, you guys probably know more than me where people actually look for, for dealerships for these reviews. Uh, ask them to leave a review in those places. And that's it for me guys. Thank you. I'll open up if anyone has any questions.